Brand new information after a 14 year old was shot outside a rec center overnight. I feel like I'm I'm someplace in hell. Today marks 20 years since the Cedar fire broke out in San Diego County. Local leaders will meet today to talk about the damage and the lives lost. Plus E. coli cases linked to a local restaurant. Now a teen is in the ICU and San Diego rent prices are down, but not by much. My initial thoughts is I'm shocked. Bob Melvin is reportedly leaving the Padres. We we have reaction. Wind has shifted back on shore and that means clouds are back to start off our Wednesday morning. We'll talk about how that will affect our temperatures and when we finally see a warm up in sight. It's 6 a.m. on Wednesday, October 25th in Europe with CBS 8. Right now, San Diego police are searching for the person who shot a teenager outside the North Claremont Recreation Center. This happened about 820 last night on Bannock Avenue. That's near Genesee Avenue. Police say four teens were at the park when two other teens walked up to the group and asked where they were from. At one point, one of the suspects pulled a gun and shot the victims, hitting a 14 year old in the thigh. He was taken to the hospital with non life threatening injuries. Officers spent the night going through nearby neighborhoods to look for the suspects. We'll keep you updated as we get more information into our newsroom. Well, today marks 20 years since the deadly cedar fire burned through San Diego County. Thanks for joining us here at 6 a.m. Everyone, I'm Eric Connert and I'm Netta E. Rampour. It was one of the worst fires in California history. CBS 8's Regina Yurita joining us live in El Cajon now to explain what's happening today. Regina. Yeah, well, first responders and local leaders will meet today in El Cajon to really reflect on the Cedar Fire and the devastating impacts it left 20 years ago in San Diego County. Thousands of people lost their homes, but not only that, some people lost their lives, others lost loved ones, and first responders had to make certain sacrifices to save buildings and homes. Take a listen to what the San Diego Fire Chief had to say about that fire. I remember looking at front yards and, and homes that I spent a lot of time at at friend's house that were no longer there. And certainly it was frustrating as a firefighter to realize that there, we couldn't put out all those fires. There were too many fires going on. And that was San Diego Fire Rescue Chief Colin Stoll. He was a captain at the time of this fire. The Cedar Fire was reported on October 25th, 2003. It started in the Cleveland National Forest near Bonita. Flames ignited after a lost hiker started a fire to signal help. By the next day, the Cedar Fire grew out of control because of the Santa, Santa Ana winds. The wildfire burned more than 273,000 acres, a total of 13% of San Diego County's land mass. It also cost the lives of 15 people. That includes Stephen Rucker, who was a fire engineer that died battling the Cedar Fire near Julian. The fire also destroyed hundreds of buildings and homes. And at the time, it was the second most destructive fire in California history. Since then, drought conditions and the 2020 fire season have pushed a fire down to the 10th most destructive. It is now considered the seventh deadliest fire in state history. It's why today Cal Fire officials will speak in El Cajon to remember the loss of life and the damage to property. Leaders also want to highlight the progress and cooperation across the county in the last 20 years, as well as how to move forward together. Now back here live, leaders will gather at one this afternoon. So those will include Mayor Todd Gloria and San Diego County's first, uh, San Diego County's fire chief. So we'll bring you the latest as more details come about that gathering. For now, I'm live in El Cajon, Regina Yurita, CBS 8. Regina, thanks. And former CBS 8 anchor Barbara Lee Edwards spent hours on the air during the Cedar Fire. She'll share her memories coming up in 30 minutes. Today, a local teacher accused of trying to meet up with a teenage girl for sex is expected in federal court. 58-year-old Sean Stevenson, a science teacher and cross-country coach at University High School. According to the U.S. Attorney's Office, he exchanged text messages with an undercover law enforcement officer who was pretending to be a woman trafficking her 16-year-old cousin. According to the UT, the school sent families a statement saying, quote, although the charges are unrelated to our school, students and district, San Diego Unified and its police department are supporting investigators as needed. This morning, a 14 year old is in the ICU after developing a severe complication from E. coli linked to a local restaurant. 13 probable cases have been tied to Miguel's Cocina in Forest Ranch. Seven required hospitalization. One teen had a complication impacting the liver. 
not everybody gets really sick with this. You might just have a little bit of diarrhea and abdominal pain. Uh, the more significant symptoms are if you find blood in your stool, if you have severe stomach cramps, if you're not able to keep down fluids. County health inspectors have not identified any major risk factors for foodborne illness at the restaurant. Miguel's Cocina closed voluntarily and says it's undergoing a deep cleaning. This is what we need, action with impact. This morning, the county is moving forward with a new plan that may provide some relief for people living near the Tijuana River Valley throughout Imperial Beach. It includes dredging or removing trash and debris to prevent flooding in more areas. So the group Wild Coast saying tires and plastic flow into the ocean every time it rains and this hurts our environment. This is an issue in addition to the sewage contamination coming from Mexico. And just this morning, take a look the Silver Strand reopened, but pretty much all of Imperial Beach is still closed. All of those red dots you see right there due to high bacteria. Tomorrow, we're going to hear from Imperial Beach's mayor about what's being done, if anything, to solve the sewage problem there. The County Board of Supervisors made rather big decisions yesterday. They approved a homeless encampment ban for unincorporated areas. The chief administrative officer will now draft an ordinance, so it's not a done deal yet. Supervisors also also voted down a resolution to support Governor Newsom's proposed constitutional amendment on gun safety. Finally, the county voted to accept a $400,000 grant from the state for a migrant welcome center in North County. This morning, we can confirm the son of one of the Israeli women just released by Hamas lives in San Diego. 79-year-old Nurit Cooper's son, Rodem Cooper, lives in Carmel Valley. He is currently in Israel, where his mom is now safe. Nurit was released Monday night, her husband still being held hostage. Meantime, the 24 hours between Monday and Tuesday saw the highest number of deaths in Gaza since the start of this war on October 7th. The Palestinian Ministry of Health says 704 people died. The death toll in Gaza, over 5,000 people now. 1,400 people were killed in Israel during Hamas's initial attack. And new this morning, intelligence officials telling CBS News they have assessed with high confidence that Israel was not responsible for the explosion at a hospital in Gaza. Instead, it was a rocket launched by Palestinian militants that had a catastrophic motor failure. Ooh, those palm trees bent almost uh, sideways there. Pa right now, parts of the coast of Mexico being slammed by a Category 4 hurricane. Hurricane Otis weakened to a Cat 4 just about three hours ago after it made landfall near Acapulco as a Category 5. The Hurricane Center says the winds near Otis's core extremely destructive. The storm is expected to rapidly weaken as it moves inland. It will likely dissipate later on tonight. Let's talk now about our local forecast here. You may be waking up to uh, what? Just a little light mist, a little mist, a little light drizzle out there and dense cloud cover. So we can all guarantee that the cloud cover is going to be the main talker. That's what we are all seeing. However, only a few of us are seeing the mist and the showers to start off the day. This is in contrast to Monday. Monday was a day where we saw a tenth of an inch two tenths of an inch in some cases. This is not expected to accumulate too much. It'll be very, very light. And in some cases, it's so light that radar can't even pick up on it. So uh, very sensitive versions of radar might be able to uh, patch through a couple areas of green, but you can see how overwhelmingly what we are picking up on across the board from the coastline through your inland valleys, even to the western slopes of the mountains. That's a dense layer of clouds. It's going to be until about 11 a.m. that we wait for the sun to peek through, especially along the coastline from about noon through 6 p.m. Good opportunity for partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies. This is, of course, much different than the complete sunshine that we worked with yesterday. So instead of seeing offshore flow that we saw yesterday with those uh, easterly winds pushing those clouds off the coast. We now have seen those winds shift. They're coming from the west, so that cool, moist air from the water is pushing onshore, and that's where that cloud cover is uh, coming into play. For the next several days, several troughs of low pressure will make their way through the area. That's going to keep our temperatures cooler than average. It's not until we get into Sunday and beyond that those temperatures start to climb into the average and above average range. That's going to be closer to our Halloween 
holiday that we actually see those warmer temperatures come into play, but good timing for it since uh, that will be when we start to see those warmer temperatures. We well, can see from our live look outside Mount Soledad overcast skies. At least most of these clouds are not too low down to the ground, meaning we're not dealing with much fog this morning, but we will watch out for visibility levels. 66 degrees right now in downtown San Diego winds out of the south at eight miles per hour. Let's take a look at your drive times out the door. It's 610 on the clock right now. So far, not seeing much of an impact on the five southbound 78 westbound or 52 westbound. You've got a about 14 minute commute from the 15 to the five on the 78. It's uh, looking pretty good so far. Let's take a look at what your border wait times are. San Ysidro Port of Entry 100 minute wait going to take you about an hour 40 to get through. If you're going through the Otay Mesa Port of Entry, about an hour and a half in total. CBS8.com slash traffic can give you the latest on any crashes or collisions that could be popping up along your morning commute. Back to you. Evan, thank you so much. And now this morning, the Padres looking for a new manager. Many people wondering who's it going to be. Yeah. According to The Athletic, the Giants will introduce Bob Melvin as their new manager today. At the end of the Padres season, reports came out that Melvin and general manager A.J. Preller's relationship was fractured. But earlier this month, both Preller and Melvin assured fans that Melvin would be returning. Former Padre Heath Bell is weighing in on this. Something we don't know is happening. I'm really interested to see what AJ is going to say about why he let him interview and why he let him go. 44 runs batted. Yeah, good point. During <laughs> Melvin's first year with the Padres, the team advanced to the National League Championships for the first time in 24 years. Okay, so we want to hear what you think. So many people have thoughts on this. <laughs> uh, we asked on X the question, how do you feel about this? Do tell? And it looks like... They let the wrong guy go. 73% of you are saying that. So uh, it looks like 18% bye-bye, Bob. And then if you said give him another chance, 9% only, though. Yeah. But most people saying they let the wrong guy go. Yeah, I had Ooh. some uh, fans weigh in on my pages saying that they think A.J. Preller should have been gone and kept Bob since he uh, seemed to be a pretty good manager. Everyone's got their own thoughts. On right, this. of course. And then what's next for the Padres? Mm -hmm. That's what I think we're looking forward to. We know they're not playing in the World we know that, we unfortunately. Know that. Yes. Sadly, Rangers yeah. and Diamondbacks. Mm -hmm. uh, still ahead here, some disturbing findings in an economic equity report for San Diego County. Plus, are San Diego's high rent prices driving you out of town? You are all weighing in on this. We'll share that coming up.